right, looks like we're live. Thank you for joining me here on this live. And if you're catching the replay, thanks for catching the replay. Uh, my name is Kayla Cox, in case you've never seen me before. Uh, and I am the owner of this channel, Six Miles to Supper. And Six Miles to Supper basically describes how I lost 80 pounds. Uh, basically, uh, at the end of the day, I was practicing intermittent fasting uh, six days a week, uh, taking a cheat day on Sunday and walking six miles a day. And um, for a good portion of that time, I was just practicing OMAD. In other words, eating one meal a day. And so uh, I have this channel. I also have a podcast and I also offer coaching and I have a course uh, and I have a couple of books that I've written about this. Uh, so, and I've forgotten to put them over here. So I won't uh, pick them up and show them to you, but uh, that's what this is all about. I, I practice intermittent fasting in a very laid back way. I've been maintaining uh, in the 140s since um, October of 2018, uh, which is about five years ago now. And so sometimes my weight has gone up uh, into the low 150s, like as high as 152.2, I think is the highest my seven day average has been in this bout of maintenance. Um, but uh, so there, there are my stats. I started at a high weight uh, of 222 pounds and my, my low weight was like 142. So uh, there you go that's when I decided to start maintaining. So uh, we do have some questions and if you have any questions, please feel free to ask them. Uh, I will do my best to answer. I am not a diet uh, or a dietitian. I'm not a nutritionist. I'm also not a doctor. So uh, I, all I can do is just give you uh, my uh, answer based on my own experience of weight loss and maintenance. So um, so anyway, so uh, th and thank you also to all the insiders who have joined the chat. Um, Elena P, I see you're in here. Uh, also, and uh, if you'd like to be a member, uh, what you get with the insider mem membership here on YouTube is I do a vlog where I, you know, talk about my day to day kind of eating and give you kind of a peek behind the scenes. Um, and I also do a members only live every Wednesday at noon Eastern. So that's uh, UTC minus four, <laughs> if that helps you out. So, um, okay, but we already have lots of questions, so I'm gonna go ahead and dig in. Uh, the first one was from uh, Shrinking Shadow. She says, hi, Kayla, have you ever done an extended fast? And if so, for how long? Thanks. Um, so yes, I have done a, um, I've done two extended fast. Um, and, and so for those of you who like aren't really familiar with that terminology, generally speaking, when somebody talks about an extended fast, it means something longer than 24 hours. Generally, uh, when uh, you're talking about intermittent fasting, that usually refers to 24 hours or less, kind of like OMAD is maybe the, the high end of intermittent fasting. And then anything past, you know, a 24 hours of fasting would be considered extended fast, uh, 36 hours. You know, generally people kind of like knock it down into like 12 to 24 hour periods. Uh, you'll hear about 36 hour fast, you know, 72, 48, that kind of a thing. So I did do two five day fast and I did them slightly differently um, that, you know, uh, in those two times. So the first time I did an extended fast, it was a five day fast. And I did allow myself to have black coffee during that time. That was the only thing, I mean, black coffee and water. And the water I did allow myself um, to add salt and um, potassium just a little bit, but oh, it's, it's so gross <laughs> to do that. But, uh, but I did do that. My, my uh, reason for doing that was I thought, well, it would help maybe with uh, like possible cramps and stuff like that, muscle cramps. I was really afraid of my muscles were going to cramp up for some reason. I think because I was still walking the six miles a day. And I, and I, like when I was a kid and I would play basketball, I would get uh, like leg cramps. And I really thought that that might happen. So, uh, so I did uh, that first fast, it was five days long. Um, and it was, I would say difficult. Like I, and I did, I documented it on here. Uh, like if you go back and look at, uh, my, you know, search through my videos, you'll see my five day fast experience. I think I, I, I think I documented both of them as far as just like, 
um, in hindsight, like I, I, I wasn't doing like a vlog or anything as far as I remember, but, um, but I did talk about my experiences. But what I do remember from that first experience was I learned I hate black coffee. Like even if I'm desperate, <laughs> I still don't like it. Um, I really didn't like the taste of it even more so on the fast. I wished that in, I, I would have just done it differently and only allowed myself water that first time. But I really thought, um, it would prevent like, um, my caffeine headaches. I, I do get caffeine headaches if I don't keep my caffeine intake the same. Uh, and so I have to be like uh, careful about that or else I'm just miserable. So um, that's why I did what I did. But uh, so that, that was the first five day fast. The way I broke that fast was after I had fasted for five days, I had a charcuterie board. <laughs> so it was like uh, roast beef, peanut butter, M&Ms, bread, I think cherry tomatoes, um, cheese of some sort. Uh, and so I did not break it gently and I was fine. Um, I have kind of a, my attitude is about fasting. Your body knows how to fast. Uh, this is how we're built. Like we are built to sometimes go for a long period of time without food. And then we might be blessed with a big meal and it's okay to just eat that meal. Uh, so that's how I approach these things. Uh, my second five day fast was, um, it was actually, uh, February of 2020. So, um, at that point I, I thought I had learned my lesson from, uh, you know, the, the black coffee thing. So I was like, okay, I'm going to have just water with, you know, I was going to add salt and potassium. And that one was five days and I did it successfully. Uh, I was miserable. We were RVing at the time and we had no electricity. Uh, we were in a, a, a campsite that was like, um, it wasn't dry camping. It was like, it had water. We had uh, access to water, but no electricity. So um, I was miserable. Like I, like the, at night, uh, there was no noise at all, like, except for the noise of the, the woods around, around us. And I was having trouble sleeping. I was miserable. My back was killing me the entire time. Like, um, that's the thing about five day fast for me or, or extended fasting. I start to get lower back pain, which may be my immune system activating and regenerating or whatever, which is probably a really good thing, but man alive, I am grumpy and miserable. <laughs> like I just like, and the, and I walk my six miles still, uh, in that one. And I was just, I was miserable. I, I, I wrote about it on my blog. I know that six miles of supper.com slash blog. You can like go through and, and read the blog post <laughs> that I wrote about it. I was miserable though. Um, and that's all the extended fasting I've done. I have not done any kind of like, um, routine kind of like three day fast or two day fast. Although I have been thinking about incorporating like a three day fast more frequently. Um, I liked the idea of a five day fast because of things I had heard about cancer prevention or possible cancer prevention benefits. Um, and since cancer runs in my family, I kind of thought, well, that's maybe a good idea, you know, something to do. So it seems like one of those really low risk, high reward kind of situations. Like I feel like a five day fast, I mean, as long as you're physically, you know, uh, not in a situation where that would be dangerous for you, the upside's really, really big. And the, the downside is really, really small. One thing I, I did do was I didn't want to do extended fasting until I got down to my goal weight. Um, because I knew that the, that I would lose a lot of like, uh, weight, just like a, a big chunk of like water weight and that it would come back really quickly. And I didn't want to like get addicted to a big decrease, uh, in my weight. Like I knew that if I went on a five day fast, I'd probably lose about 10 pounds. Uh, but I knew it would come back. And so I was afraid of doing that during my weight loss phase because I thought oh, it'll just mess with me psychologically. So, um, my own personal rule for myself is, uh, I'm not going to use extended fasting uh, if I ever found myself in a place where I was like over, you know, like over where I want to be, uh, to lose weight, I'm just going to stick with, you know, my old reliable, you know, OMAD six days a week, walk six miles a day, cheat day on Sunday, uh, to get myself down back into my range. Uh, and then only do extended fasting when I'm in a place where I'm really happy with my weight. So that's just my own personal, uh, rule. Okay. Uh, inspired by Christ LJ says, good morning. Thanks for all your wisdom. Oh, thanks. Uh, can you please talk about fasting without coffee alternatives? I have been drinking way too many cups to push through my fasting. Okay. So that's a good question. Uh, 
Um, okay, so I and I think that's good that you're listening to yourself and you're thinking, eh, I'm 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 having to like kind of. It feels like you you're you're relying too much, right, on the the coffee. It's like this is too much coffee because <laughs> I get to that point, like, and it's been actually really interesting. Uh, so. Uh, I, I announced this on my newsletter, uh, and I, I should also put a link to my newsletter. If you want to get my newsletter, I send out a newsletter every week. I'm putting it in the chat. Um, and uh, it's just six miles to supper com slash newsletter. But um, I announced this on my newsletter and also to the insiders, but I've I've paused on making more videos for this channel, like the videos that I'll, you know, record and edit and all that stuff. Um, and the reason for that is I've been trying to finish my maintenance book. And so uh, I, I, and I have lots of little projects that just aren't getting done because I'm uh, trying to do all this stuff on this channel. And so I've like cut back by not doing podcasts, not doing videos. I'll do these lives and I'll do the vlogs for the insiders. But other than that, I'm just focusing on these projects. Um, and so uh, during this time, I'm also doing a media fast, a modified media, media fast. So media fasting is something I learned about from Julia Cameron in her book, The Artist's Way, which is a fantastic book, by the way. If you're a creative person at all, I highly recommend it. But she talks about like going on a seven day media fast. So a media fast, meaning no screens, like no watching movies, no listening to music, no reading books, uh, n nothing like that. No, no consuming other people's creativity. And so I'm doing a modified version of that. Like I'm keeping like, I'm, you know, my husband and I would do date night. So if, if we're going to watch a movie, that's fine. Uh, if I like on sleep on the couch night, that's our family night with our kids. If we do a, a media fast, that's okay too. Um, and so, uh, that is, uh, that, that's what I'm doing. So, uh, and there, there's some other rules, but basically like, I'm just like no podcast, that kind of a thing. And so, um, it has been really good, but an interesting thing that I didn't really expect. And I don't remember this happening when I did, I I've actually done a seven day media fast before and I loved it. Um, but when I, uh, since I've been doing this, I haven't wanted as much coffee like a like which and that's like a r weird thing for me like i'm 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 writing so much and i'm doing like all this like editing work uh and i would normally expect myself to really want a bunch of coffee but like after i've had two cups in the morning like first thing when i wake up like i'm i'm kind of done for the day um and so that's kind of an interesting thing that has happened i don't know um so uh so i understand the point is i understand where you're talking about like where you're like i you know other types of alternatives. One thing you could do is, uh, you know, hot tea, hot herbal tea, like that doesn't have any caffeine in it. Um, that's a, that's an option. Um, now, okay. So I don't do artificial sweeteners as a general rule. Like, um, if, if somebody gives me a drink that has, you know, uh, stevia or, you know, Splenda, something like that, I'll take it. I'll be grateful uh, and I'll enjoy it. Um, but I, I tend to not, uh, drink them or, you know, purchase them and stuff because it usually kind of messes with my stomach. So I don't feel great after I have them usually. Um, so I don't, so like, I'm not going to have like diet Cokes and stuff like that during the fasting window. Uh, some people do though. I'm, I'm offering that as a, an alternative because some people do that. Um, you know, like it, not everything has caffeine in it either. You know, like, uh, maybe diet Sprite, I think has no caffeine, uh, root beer, uh, diet root beer has no caffeine. Um, but ultimately those are no calorie. Um, and so from, from just a calorie in calorie in calorie in calorie out kind of standpoint, that's not going to mess with, with that. Um, uh, or, you know, what I do is I do a uh, sparkling, flavored water, but it's unsweetened. So this would be LaCroix. Like I believe all of LaCroix, uh, their stuff, it doesn't have any kind of sweeteners. There are some brands that kind of do this, like they have some that are unsweetened and some that are artificially sweetened. So you kind of have to watch like Clear American has some that are flavored and unsweetened and others that are artificially sweetened and flavored. Um, and I just go with the unsweetened flavored ones. Um, 
again, not because I am afraid of what artificial sweeteners would do to the fast or anything like I don't that I'm not worried about that, obviously, because I have coffee with half and half. <laughs> but that's another option. Like, um, I think that's a good option. Just, you know, unsweetened tea. Uh, I'll do that a lot, um, which you could do decaf. Uh, if you if, if you're worried about like the caffeine, mostly, I think I think that's probably what you're um, what you're talking about, but it is nice to have some sort of, um, some sort of alternative, something to just give you some variety. You know, it's nice. It's nice to have variety in the fasting window. Um, yes, there are benefits to being very disciplined in your fasting window. I get that. I'm not, I'm not against discipline, but, um, as far as long term, like sticking with fasting, enjoying fasting, what you enjoy, you stick with, I find. Um, and so, giving yourself those things that kind of brighten up your day, I think are helpful. Um, so that, th those are some, hopefully that, uh, offers you some, uh, different examples of things you could do, uh, besides half coffee. Uh, and also I will say this too. So if you find yourself like kind of hyper-focused <laughs> on like coffee or something like that, it might just be, you need more things to keep you busy in the fasting window. Um, like, you know, reading books, picking up a new hobby, learning a new language. Learning is really nice because learning keeps your mind active. Um, you know, j there's just lots of stuff, uh, to do. Uh, so keeping yourself busier also, I find to be helpful. Um, okay. So Alina asked, have you ever done, uh, more than 24 hours, but less than five days? And can we do 48 hours uh, together as a group, which means only skipping one meal since I already do OMAD. Okay, so I'll take the first question first. So the first question is, have I ever done anything more than 24 hours, but less than 48? Yes. Um, it would have been like, I'm trying to, th uh, like, I was not very scientific about this one. It, the situation was something like um, my OMAD ended up being maybe something like noon one day. I, if I'm, this is very fuzzy in my head, but, uh, but I'll say it was like something like it was probably during Lent. And so I had OMAD one day at lunchtime. So it was around noon. Uh, but then the next day we didn't eat supper until like late in the evening. So it was more, it was something more like a 36 hour fast, I would say. And I would say there have been other times where it's been something like a 30 hour fast. I don't pay attention to the, the clock, uh, which I find makes fasting a whole lot easier when I'm just not looking at the clock. Um, but, uh, I, I found that those are really easy. Like, uh, like that whole thing, like an OMAD earlier in the day and then an OMAD later in the day. So you're ended up like at a, you know, more, more than 24 hour fast. I find those really easy and those can fit in your life. Super easy. Uh, if you're like, as, as long as OMAD is when you're at the point where OMAD feels easy, uh, then the first few times you maybe go longer on your OMAD, that'll feel hard. But after a while that feels easy. And then same with like an extended fast. Uh, it's really just more a mindset game. I feel like once you get to OMAD, anything past that, it, you realize it, it's like fasting, fasting is just mindset. Um, when you get down to it, it's, uh, it's, well, it's mostly mindset. It's mostly a mental game. Um, uh, and so, uh, that's my experience of that. Now, would I ever do a 48 hour fast together as a group? Um, maybe. And the, the reason I even hesitate is, uh, I, you know, like, I have to think about like people's perception of risk and like, I don't, I don't want to encourage people to do things that they, it might be bad for them. Uh, and that kind of a thing. Although I think a 48 hour fast is a pretty, you know, pretty tame one to do. Uh, I would, I would certainly not do a five day fast together and like recommend that like as a blanket kind of thing, because, you know, some people like they really shouldn't do a five day fast. And it's, uh, I feel like there's an, there, there's kind of like this individuality that I think you kind of have to be ready for it. Um, even a 48 hour fast, I think for some people, it's maybe not a great idea. Like, um, because, because if you're doing it, if you're doing it to hasten results, I think is a really bad idea. I think it's a good idea to lose weight in the way that you can stick with meaning 
that you're, and this is just my opinion, but that you're changing your behaviors permanently around food and that you're not doing something extreme in the short term in the hopes that you'll keep it off in the long term. Because that's what I used to do. Like I used to, when I was a, you know, a kid and all the way into my twenties, whenever I was losing weight, I was doing these things that I wouldn't stick with for a long time. Like I would, you know, cut out all the sugar, you know, or, you know, uh, drink protein shakes and, and like, and I would be miserable, but I would do it so that I could hit my goal weight. But then when I hit my goal weight, I would go back to all my old behaviors around food and I would always gain the weight back. So I had to learn how to permanently change my behavior around food. And that's a much slower process. Um, so that's where I'm at on that. So, but I, but I, but I may, I may, I, it, because I do know, I know that people can be helped by that. I've never done challenges though. Like I, that's just not how I did the weight loss journey. I didn't like go on cha like group challenges and, and do the diet bet type thing. And, you know, like that's just not what I did. I just like did my stuff day in, day out, tried to, you know, learn from my mistakes and, and all that. But I do understand that, that, group things can be helpful. So maybe like I, I, and I've thought about, I've thought about, you know, doing different challenges, step goal challenges, stuff like that. And maybe in the new year, uh, I definitely have to get done with all these projects <laughs> that I'm trying to get done with before I offer an, another thing. So it looks like there is some <laughs> interest in it though. So yeah, well, I'll keep that in the back of my mind. Um, Will and uh, Elena asked, uh, will an audio book version of your second book be available soon? My second book does have an audio book already, uh, Overcoming Weight Loss Obstacles, which was my second book, which maybe like, maybe you didn't know that, because <laughs> sometimes I forget to talk about uh, Overcoming Weight Loss Obstacles. Uh, let me see if I can get the link to it. Um, uh, that is uh, about the harder parts of weight loss. So I wrote the laid back guide to intermittent fasting to just explain how I practice intermittent fasting. Like, because um, I practiced it in a way that it seemed like was different uh, than other people practice intermittent fasting. Uh, like most people, it seemed like, from, from what I could tell, would combine intermittent fasting with keto or um they would say well yeah you can do intermittent fasting but you really have to go low carb or you know th things like that so um or like you have to be a clean faster like you can't have anything in your fasting window or you won't lose weight and i didn't do any of that you know i ate what i wanted and i had coffee with cream in uh, my fasting window and i still lost weight so um, I thought, well, I'll write a book about it. <laughs> like I, I had already, actually I had, I had already started this channel and somebody in the comment section, uh, encouraged me to write a book, which was already in the back of my head. I had always wanted to write a book. Um, um, but I, that was the, the push that I needed. So I wrote that book. And then after I wrote that book, I was kind of like, well, I mean, I liked that I wrote that book, but I felt like there's other stuff I had to say about weight loss. Like I wanted to talk about you know, the, the hard time people have getting started with weight loss and what I learned about that. And I wanted to talk about the, the messiness of weight loss itself and all the things you have to overcome. And then even in maintenance, there are things to overcome. So I wrote the, the overcoming weight loss obstacles as a way to try to, you know, talk about all the different obstacles you face on, you know, on the weight loss journey from the beginning, the things that keep you from getting started to the middle, the things that like trip you up as you're going along. And then in maintenance, all these things that come up again. Um, and so, uh, so I wrote that book, uh, and it's available also uh, as an audio book and as a paperback and on Kindle. Um, and so, uh, so the, so that's all available now. Uh, <laughs> Okay. And so, um, and so then I am writing a third book and I'm getting really close to being done with it. So hopefully it'll be out within the next week or so, I hope. Um, and it is about maintenance. It's all about maintenance. It's just going to be the laid back guide <laughs> to maintenance, weight loss maintenance. Um, because I feel like it, it's, 
I, I wanted to write that book after I'd been in maintenance for longer than, um, you know, a, just a couple of years because, and I'm glad I did because there's a lot that I've learned. And so hopefully it'll be helpful. Um, I'm feeling pretty good about it right now. Uh, but yeah, so there you go. Uh, Alina said my first ever 72 hour fast ends in two hours. Oh, wow. So, Hey, and that was, that was a few minutes ago. So it's even less now. So <laughs> I can definitely understand why people say I can keep going. It's so easy now because I'm already into a rhythm and that's true. Like I remember on day five, I thought I could keep going. Like, and I could, I could have like, and I, see th this is where I feel like extended fasting to someone who has struggled with their weight, it, it's like, I won't say dangerous, but I think you do have to be careful, you know, like, because, you know, like there, there are all these things, right? Like you, you can take anything too far. And, um, and so I remember, let's so say what is, uh, you know, 72 hours is four day. No, three day. Yeah. Three. So that's three days. And then, so I like, I remember being on day five and thinking I could go longer, but then I didn't. And because I thought, you know, like there are parts of it that I think could be very beneficial. I, I like, I, I think about the spiritual benefits also of that. Um, uh, but then you have to be careful with that too. Um, I mean, Jesus fasted 40 days and 40 nights and Satan <laughs> tempted him during that time. So I do think you have to be careful. Um, and I would say, talk to a priest about it. Um, and I, I plan to, if I ever do a extended fast again, I'm going to talk to my priest about it also. Um, but yeah, it's, it, but you do get into a rhythm. And I, I remember when I did my five day fast, people talking about their own experiences. Like we did a, we did a live and people were, you know, I think there was a trucker actually. And he was talking about how many uh, hours he had been fasted and how he felt like his alertness was higher. Like he was sharper even on like day five of his fast than he was when he's just eating regularly, which I think is really interesting. Um, and I think the same can happen uh, like, uh, Memphis, Tennessee living was talking about the, their media fast, uh, and they did a whole month. So that's like, no, oh, wow. No internet, no media. Wow. For a whole month. It sounds like heaven, <laughs> doesn't it? Sometimes <laughs> like it's, uh, uh, it's, it, it is, um, when I, when I fast from media, sometimes I think, man, why do I ever listen to a podcast? Why do I ever go on YouTube at all? Like, because it, there's this piece, uh, that can come in, uh, but it's not like, but it's not super easy either. I mean, because when you're alone with your thoughts, you're alone with your thoughts and you're like, and, and things can, um, you can get clarity on things, things that you didn't even realize were bothering you. It can kind of like bubble up as like, oh, wow, I didn't even realize but the distractions of all the media can, can do that to you. They can, the, it can distract you from what's important. It can distract you from problems. Weight, your weight problem can be a distraction in and of itself. Like you can create drama for yourself by regaining weight. Like I've done that before. Um, so yeah, it's interesting. All this fasting, the different kinds of fasting that you can do too. Just not just you know, not just from, I mean, you can do like simple things too, like fasting from just coffee. Like I'm not going to have coffee for 30 days, that kind of a thing. Um, yeah. All right. Uh, Alina asked, uh, does stopping half and half in coffee help with weight loss? I, I can't imagine that it makes a difference. Um, okay. So this is my opinion. I think, no, I don't think it helps or detracts with weight loss. Um, in the big scheme of things, but here, okay. So ultimately I think weight loss comes down to calories in calories out. Okay. Like if you burn 1500 calories and you eat 1500 calories, your weight will stay the same. I mean, what, uh, you know, it'll maybe the weight, uh, water weight will fluctuate a little bit, but generally your body composition will stay the same. If you eat 1600 calories a day and you're only burning 1500, you are going to gain weight over time. It's going to be very, very gradual, but you will gain weight. And likewise, if you eat 1400 calories a day and you're burning 1500 calories a day, your weight will trend down over time. You'll lose weight over time. So now if 
the calories that you're having in your half, I mean, uh, like you can point to anything in your daily eating and say, well, if you would just cut out that, then you would lose weight, right? That's, that's the idea. And that is true. But, uh, the larger thing is, well, as long as you still consume the right amount to hit your goals, then the half and half is not going to be, uh, the deciding factor. Um, so, uh, so yeah, so like, I don't think it makes a difference. Um, and I think it can actually really help if, and this was, this was the case for me. I would not stick to intermittent fasting unless I could have my coffee with half and half in it. Like over the long term, I can tell you, I, and I, and I knew this, I had, I had this, like this moment of clarity, um, when I was, you know, trying to figure out like, why can't I stick to intermittent fasting? Like what's going on? And ultimately it was like, it's because I, I get miserable. I get miserable when I can't have my morning coffee. I want my morning coffee. If I could just have my morning coffee, then I could do this whole like, pushing breakfast until later, you know, maybe my first meal's lunch or whatever that is. Like I could do that consistently. I could do that forever, but I, I want my coffee, <laughs> you know? So, um, so in that way, you know, like if, if you're looking at, at that, well then I wouldn't have been able to stick with intermittent fasting. Uh, so, but since I was able to stick with intermittent fasting and once I got consistent, I lost the weight. Um, and so in that way, half and half definitely helped me. Um, now, like if I went to, you know, drinking a bunch of coffee, like I'm just chugging the half and half all day long <laughs> and, you know, like, and I'm not eating less, well, that's obviously going to cause weight gain. Um, and so, um, so yes, the half and half helps me, but it could certainly, uh, if you take anything to an extreme, uh, and just eat too much, then you're going to gain weight. So there you go. All right, let's see. Matt Swanson says, do you have any thoughts on time of day for one or two meals? I tend to like lunch for OMAD, lunch and dinner for TUMAD. Um, yeah, so my thought on it, because I've done it, I've done OMAD, I would say in two different kinds of ways. So when I was losing weight, um, I would do OMAD at about 6.30 in the evening. Now that wasn't a hard and fast rule. It wasn't like, I've got to eat at 6.30. It was just like, Generally, that's when OMAD was. Um, and I enjoyed that. Um, I found, you know, that I slept fine. I, I, I found everything was good with that. Um, now, my husband's work schedule is uh, a little bit different these days. And so we generally eat later in the afternoon. So it's and it varies because his time that he gets off work varies. Like sometimes it's like around three, sometimes it's around four, sometimes it's around five. But I have found that I actually like my OMAD being a little bit earlier in the afternoon. Um, especially for those meals that kind of sit heavy, you know, like that you kind of need a little bit of time. Uh, sometimes when we were eating 630, sometimes it'd be closer to seven, 730 even. And so like, if, if I like have a big meal and then go to sleep right after that, um, I, I mean, I don't think it really affects the weight. I didn't notice any kind of like weight gain when it was later in the evening, but, I, but I have noticed like, um, the, uh, better sleep, um, when it's a little bit earlier in the day, seems to me that that's what's happening now, uh, two meals, definitely, you know, lunch and dinner, although, <laughs> so I've been, so Saturdays for me, my, my husband makes, um, and he's done this, uh, and this, this is the origin of cheat day for me was, uh, my husband, uh, makes our family homemade pancakes on the weekends. Now he used to do it on Sunday mornings, but then we started going to church. So now we do it on Saturday morning. So I keep the, what my, what my schedule looks like right now, if you want a little snapshot is Monday through Friday is OMAD. Uh, and I do, and I walk six miles Monday through Saturday, uh, Saturday is two med and then Sunday is cheat day. Uh, and so, uh, th and the reason it's OMAD Monday through Friday is because I'm writing a book <laughs> and I need the, I need that structure. Um, so, uh, 
uh, but my two mad is very weird on Saturday because it's breakfast and supper, um, which is weird. Uh, I mean, like I would prefer it if I'm going to do two mad, uh, just from a, just from a, like, you know, how would I like to do it? I would rather do uh, lunch and dinner. I prefer having that, you know, like not eating first thing in the morning thing. Um, but it is what it is. I, I, but I really love having that time with my family and my kids and the, it's a special memory and we've been doing it for like a long, long time now. And I love that we do it and uh, I wouldn't trade it. Uh, so, uh, so that's what I'm doing right now. I'm doing like a, a breakfast and supper kind of too mad on Sunday or sorry, Saturday. And, uh, and it's fine. Um, I will say what I have found is that particular day is, uh, well, it's a challenge. Okay. First of all, cause you know, breakfast is, uh, you know, pancakes. Uh, but then, uh, I'm going a long period of time and then, uh, we've got supper, uh, and the supper that's, um, sleep on the couch night. So that's our family night. So generally we're watching a movie and eating food at the same time. Uh, we don't do a lot of that, you know, but that is like, that's just one of those times where I am eating while in front of a screen. Uh, so I have to be just mindful, like, because I, you know, I know about myself that if I'm watching something, I, I tend to just, you know, eat mindlessly and I can eat too much. Uh, but you know, but enough time has passed from the pancakes where it's like, well, I'm pretty hungry, <laughs> you know, like it feels kind of like more like an OMAD, but it's not really, um, it hasn't been quite enough, uh, uh quite long enough to justify an OMAD sized meal, but my appetite usually feels like I want an OMAD sized meal. So there you go. Um, let's see. Ah, Anna, you're here from Georgia. Good to see you again. Um, let's see here. Uh, oops, let's see. Sorry. I like, I, I ended up way down in the comments and I've missed some questions. Let's see here. Uh, mm -hmm. <laughs> of course I arrive when Kayla is talking about sustainability. Exactly what I need to hear. <laughs> yeah. I'm all about sustainability. I really am. I feel like it's just so important. And it's, and it's kind of like, it's kind of like the opposite of what everybody wants to hear. Everybody wants to hear about fast weight loss. Like, I mean, I used to, that was like my mindset when I, I mean, 2015, I was like, I want to lose five pounds a week and that's it. Like anything less than that is failure. That's where my mindset was firmly at in 2015. Uh, and that's really what it had been my whole life was like, I want to lose five pounds a week and be done. <laughs> you know, uh, it never happened for me that way. Uh, I never lost weight that fast. Even when I was being very, 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 very consistent on some very restrictive kind of diets. Um, I just don't, I don't lose weight quickly. Um, uh, let's see here. Anna Frazier. I've been taking fiber pills to aid with my diet. Uh, since it seems I get so full on protein and eating protein first, Jason Fung said to eat carbs last. That's why fiber supplements help. Interesting. I've, I don't do any kind of like supplements or anything. So, well, except for these, I do take my omega threes. Uh, it's for the one gram of, uh, or yeah, one gram, I think of EPA. Uh, I had, I've heard Andrew Huberman, uh, recommend that for, um, dopamine levels, like keeping those at a good, like good thing. So that's why I do that. But, um, uh, and I've been doing that for about a year now, I think. And I've, it seems to have helped like, so a, a thing that I've been doing, and I think it's been a, a close to a year now, two, three things, two things, two things, uh, taking my EPA, um, and also, um, taking cold showers. Uh, it seems to have helped with my mood, um, uh, keeping it just really level, even, even through the winter months, t I tend to, uh, have lower mood in the winter time. So I'm always like, I've been trying to be really proactive, uh, with that, um, for the past year. So, uh, yeah, so there you go. 
uh, Shrinking Shadow, at the moment you realized you wanted to lose weight, what made you want to do OMAD? Oh, well, that didn't happen. Um, I didn't even know OMAD was a thing at that point. So my I've had enough moment uh, was in March of 2014, and I got tagged in some Facebook photos, um, and I did not recognize myself. I was um, just very upset when I saw the photos because, again, not, I mean, in hindsight, you know, like I look at it, I think, well, yeah, I mean, it wasn't that bad, but um, I didn't recognize myself, and that was the upsetting thing, just like, that's not me. That's not me. Like, I, and I was, it was a very low point. I was crying. I was upset. I was thinking my family would be better off without me. Uh, and that was not good. Like that is really not good. And, um, I prayed and I was like, God help me <laughs> because I need help. Like, and I, I didn't realize that was like the first time I ever realized in my entire life that, that my weight could actually cause a real problem in my life. Um, like it was important. Like I, like I, I, I wanted it not to be important, but it was important. Um, and so, uh, so you would think, right? Like, oh, I prayed and then everything fixed itself immediately. No, that's it's not, I guess that's not how God works. Um, but, uh, I remember in that moment, uh, I was blaming everybody else. I I was saying it's it's my family's fault. It's my kids' fault because I mean I gained weight because I had kids. Uh, I thought it was the food industry's fault, fast food companies' faults, diet and weight loss industry their fault. You know, like it was everybody else's fault. Uh, but after I prayed, I remember I was sitting there and I just started to think, no, that's not it. It's not their fault. It's my fault. And, um, so that was like the first little moment of, uh, responsibility for me, like really, really taking responsibility for my weight. And, uh, you might think, well, then you lost all the weight really fast. No, <laughs> I did not. Uh, so 2014, I did not weigh, uh, I didn't want to weigh. I wanted to lose weight without weighing. And so, uh, I was like, I just need to lose weight and I just need to measure myself. And so that's what I did for the next year. I, uh, measured myself every week with a tape measure. I measured like all different parts of my body and I was lying to myself. I was like, what, like, why did I like looking back? It's like, why were you doing that? But every week I would pull the tape tighter because look, I was not losing weight. I was not, I was not consistent on any kind of plan. I was doing stuff like I would walk, I would, uh, like, what was it for, for a while there? I, I would jog three miles a day. I mean, I, and I would like, I remember I would put cottage cheese in my eggs. Cause I thought, well, you know, that's like high protein and that's good. You know, like I, I was trying stuff. I didn't want to be on a diet. I knew diets never worked for me in the long run. Like I never stuck to a diet. Um, and so I, um, I, I was like, I've got to figure this out, but I, I can't just diet. Like I, I, I won't stick to it. So, uh, so 2014, I was doing a lot of research. I was researching and researching and not really taking a lot of consistent action that would actually help me lose weight. And it was the, the end of that year that I heard about intermittent fasting. Um, it was like an article I read, I think on nerd fitness. Um, and I was like, Oh, that's interesting. Like it, they said, you know, what if every day was like Thanksgiving, you know how you save up room for Thanksgiving? Like, so that's what intermittent fasting is. It's like you, you don't eat first thing in the morning, you kind of wait and then you have bigger meals. And I thought, well, well, I eat bigger meals. I like bigger meals that might actually work. And so, uh, so 2015, February, 2015. So almost a year after I had that, I've had enough moment. Uh, I got on the scale and that's when I saw that I was 222 pounds, which was not what I thought I weighed. I thought maximum 185, but I was off by 40 pounds. <laughs> so, um, so yeah, so I, um, 
I was going to a gym and I was working out really hard. And that year, once I started weighing, things started to improve uh, because I knew what was at least happening. You know, I could see a cause and effect like, okay, I'm doing this. Am I having results? Um, and so I started doing intermittent fasting. Uh, I also learned about it from, um, Martin Birkin's blog, uh, lean gains. I, because I was going to the gym, I heard about, you know, lean gains was a thing that you could do. And that was like, you know, certain kind of like weightlifting or something, but he talks about intermittent fasting. I was like, okay, I'm going to try this. So I started doing intermittent fasting. I started, you know, I was weight training, uh, ended up hurting my back that first year. I lost 15 pounds total, uh, well, 20 pounds total regained like five and was on my way back up. Uh, and I wasn't being consistent. I was in a really big hurry. I was just wanting to lose five pounds a week and be done. And I felt like I was failing every week because I was not losing five pounds a week. I was losing at best a pound a week. And so, uh, I remember at the end of 20, 15, I felt like quitting. I was like, look, I've tried. I mean, this was two years past my, uh, almost two years past my, I've had enough moment and I was down, you know, 15 pounds. And, and I, I just felt like that's ridiculous. That's like seven pounds a year. <laughs> that's, that's not good. I'm wanting to be losing five pounds a week. And, um, and so January, 2016, I got very clear with myself, very clear with my rules. I made a simple plan you know, and it was intermittent fasting six days a week, walk six miles a day, take a cheat day on Sunday, eat whatever I want at my meals, no restricted foods at all. And, uh, and have coffee with half and half whenever I want it. And surely, uh, slowly, but surely in 2016, because I was able to be consistent with that plan, I lost about a pound a week. And by the end of that uh, year, by November of 2016, I had gotten down to my first goal weight, which was 157, 158, and I maintained that for a few, uh, for a year before I decided to lose a little bit more. And that's when I lost down to 142. Uh, OMAD, <laughs> your question was about OMAD. Uh, so the, what made me want to do OMAD, I didn't even really know OMAD was a thing, like I said. Um, so I had been, so 2016, I had been practicing intermittent fasting consistently. And it was about April of that year and my kids got a stomach virus and I was scared of vomit at the time. <laughs> so I, I got, I was just very, very nervous and, uh, I was so nervous and this is very rare for me, but I was so nervous. I really couldn't eat. Like, I was just like, I don't want to eat. I don't want to eat. And so like, it would be evening and I would think I really need to eat. And so I would finally eat at supper time. So for a couple of days there, I just practiced OMAD just because that was like what I could, you know, I could just force myself to eat once a day. I never got sick, but that was just like, that was my limit. I was like, okay, like I can, I can just, it was just a particularly nasty kind of bug, uh, that my kids were going through. And so, uh, so, that week, uh, I was down like six pounds. I was like, what? You know, like I finally found the thing. <laughs> it's just eat once a day. <laughs> and so I looked it up. I was like, can you eat just once a day? Because that would be great. And I found this article that talked about OMAD. And I thought that OMAD was referring to like nomadic people. Like I didn't even get that it meant one meal a day, but, um, but it was like, oh yeah, people have eaten one meal a day, you know, like monks have done it and all this stuff. Uh, people have done it uh, for thousands of years and I thought, well, I can do this. So, um, and I really thought that I was going to like lose, you know, five or six pounds a day. And plus I felt great. Like I, I loved how I felt on it and I was like, this is a winner. And then my weight, uh, plateaued <laughs> for like the next six weeks and I barely lost anything. Uh, but I stuck with OMAD because I really enjoyed it. And I really felt like this is like life simplifying and I can do this. And so that's what made me do OMAD and, uh, the rest is history. Uh, Anna Frazier says, yes, yeah, still losing weight with my uh, coffee and vanilla creamer. And I even ate my brownie last night for dessert. It's just a matter of watching your portion sizes. It's so true. Isn't it? it it's like, it's so true. And it's simple. It is like, it's simple. And yet we want to complicate it. Or I did, you know, that was something that was, it was interesting to me to kind of realize at one point, I didn't want it 
to be easy. Like, look, when, when I realize like I can really eat whatever I want, like I can have chocolate cake if I want it and I can still lose weight moreover by eating chocolate cake, uh, I kind of didn't want it to be true. And the reason I didn't want it to be true was because that meant that like when I was a kid on a diet, I was suffering needlessly. <laughs> <laughs> like, and, and so many times when I have, like in the past, I had sat down and I've been, you know, overweight and it, like all this food drama in my head about like, you shouldn't be eating this donut, you're overweight and thinking, but I want the donut. Like everybody else gets to have donuts. Like, why can't I have a donut? Um, I kind of, I kind of didn't want it to be true, but, um, but I'm glad that I just got past that and realized like, no, it's, it's okay. And that's why I try to tell other people about it because <laughs> I don't want them to suffer needlessly. So, um, yeah, let's see here. Mm. Yeah, Anna says this is why she sticks with OMAD. I, she doesn't eat brownies every night, but she doesn't feel deprived either. Uh, it's kind of like telling, telling your kids no and they want to do it all the more, but saying yes and then they stop. It's so, <laughs> it's so true, though. It's like, it's this like weird, I don't know, like Jedi mind trick. It's like if you if you just tell yourself like you can have whatever you want, then like suddenly you've got stopping power. Who knew? Um, let's see. Yeah, the social media helps me not eat while fasting. Yeah, it's it's that it, social media helped me in the beginning. Like um, that was a that was a reason why I was able to stick with my step goal. I made a rule for myself that I could be on social media, but only if I was currently like walking around or if I already had my steps in. So like I couldn't just sit there and be on social media if I still needed to accomplish my step goal, which meant like the social media was the carrot, you know, that got me up and walking around. Um, over time, uh, I started to see that I was regretting being on social media. Like in other words, uh, it was like through the process of, practicing intermittent fasting and I would start to see like, oh, you know, like I'm standing here at the pantry, I'm in my fasting window and yet I want to eat. Like, why do I want to eat right now? And so I would like go backwards in my head, like, what was I doing right before this? And a lot of times the answer was I was on social media and, uh, I was, you know, like stressed out about something I saw or like just upset about something. And, um, and that's why. So then I started to ask myself after every social media session that I did, am I glad, am I glad that I went on there just now? Um, th did it make my life better or did it make it worse? And sometimes it made it better, right? Because sometimes I would see like pictures of, you know, uh, you know, nieces or nephews or things like that. And then other times it was like, no, that was like, it was some sort of like, whatever that upset me, some sort of post or, you know, whatever. And I, I did for a while, I was like aggressively hiding people, <laughs> like hiding and, um, block and not blocking, but just hiding people. You can do that without their realizing that you're, they're hidden. They don't know that they're just like, you don't see their stuff. And, uh, so I, I did that really aggressively for a long time. Uh, and then after a while it was kind of like, oh, this is boring. <laughs> you know, like it got to the point where I didn't want to do it anymore. Um, and I, and I, and the only thing, uh, that I had to learn was, you know, like if I want to be more connected with those people, like see those pictures and stuff, then I need to just reach out and ask, uh, for pictures and things like that. So yeah. Uh, these days I don't have any social media. I don't have, except for this, you know, uh, YouTube technically counts, I think, cause it's got a community tab and there's interaction. Uh, but, uh, I don't, I don't have Instagram. I don't have Facebook. My husband has Facebook still. Um, but I do not. Karen e says, wouldn't you have to have a lot of half and half in order to move the needle in a bad way for your fast? Yeah, I think so. You know, uh, but again, ultimately though, it does come down to this very fine line, right? Like ultimately you can point to anything and say, oh, well, it's that half and half, but really it's just like, the extra calories, that extra bite of food, you could also blame it on. Um, so yeah, the shrinking cheddar, let's see. Mm. 
<laughs> ah, Chris is in here. Sorry, I'm, I'm like, I'm way up in the comment section, I guess. Um, yeah, Carissa is using heavy cream in her coffee and doing uh, OMAD, and she's losing just fine, which is great. You know, like, and I've, like, people, I have had people who have had diet cherry Coke, you know, that's what they wanted in their fasting window, and they did just fine, or di diet cherry Pepsi, I believe it was, um, and she did just fine. She lost weight, and it's like, and I know, like, people get it in their heads, like, oh, but you can't because of, you know, they heard this person say, if you, if you drink this or you have this, it's going to you know, do this to you and you're going to, it's going to be impossible to lose weight. But people disprove that kind of stuff all the time. It's just a matter of doing the thing and letting the results speak for themselves. Um, yeah. Let's see here. Yeah. People like, uh, yeah, people get really, um, like if they've ever been a clean faster and in kind of that world and I look, I like, I say, whatever works for you, if it works for you, do it. Like, and don't listen to anybody <laughs> who would tell you otherwise. Uh, like I never, I never want people to perceive as though I'm saying don't clean fast. If you want to clean, if you want to clean fast, go for it. Like, I feel like there are benefits there, uh, especially with discipline that can be really good. But I've also seen a lot of people have a hard time with it and have a very hard time switching over to something that they could stick with better and they could still have results on. Uh, it's just like, a, the, the, and they'll talk about it. It's like, it's so hard to get out of that mindset. And that's the thing it is, it's a mindset, uh, but you can, you can change. The main thing is to watch the scale, see what your results are. Uh, yeah. Diet brain. Whew. Yeah, it's a bad, it's, it's, it, it can be destructive. You're absolutely right. It really can. Um, yeah. Uh, the shrinking shadow. Oh, she's talking to Karen. Uh, yeah, you can't watch food videos or read or watch recipes. Yeah, like it is helpful uh, to kind of in your early days of fasting, avoid, you know, uh, TV. I, I am always surprised cause I don't, I don't watch much TV, but I remember, um, being like really surprised at just how often, like if you're just watching regular TV, like you just like, I'm talking like cable, you know, where there's like still commercials and stuff. Um, if you just flip it on and flip to a random show, it's like, people are eating all the time. The commercials are about food, you know, like all sorts of food or, you know, some sort of like terrible disease you might have. So you got to take this pill. <laughs> like it's like all this stress and all this like pushing food on you and stuff. Um, and that can really, that can make it really hard on your weight loss journey. Uh, and it can be a lot easier if you just, if you just set, like avoid all that stuff for at least for the time being. And then, you know, if you kind of, over time you can allow it back in, but, uh, when you're, when, it, when you're more firmly, uh, rooted, you know, um, Carissa's corner. Can I tell you all the benefits of being at a good, comfortable weight? Sure. Um, that's, that's, that's interesting. Cause I don't, I don't actually get that question very often. Um, here are the benefits that come to my mind. First of all, the being, the feeling comfortable in my own skin, just in general, just like I feel good. I feel good about where I'm at. I feel comfortable. I don't feel like people are looking at me all the time or judging me, which I know that most people were not. And I know that that's spotlight syndrome, but it's just not on my mind anymore. Um, being able to keep up with my family, being able to keep up with my kids. Um, I remember vividly chafing at like a theme park one time when I was obese, it was super painful, like super, super painful, like uh, chafing. If you've never really chafed before, like, oh my gosh, like it is like fiery pain. <laughs> and I remember feeling so angry at myself because I was like, this is because of the excess weight. And, um, and it was true. Like, I mean, the reason I was chafing was because, um, I was obese and, um, and w like since lo like I've lost the weight, I've never 
chafed. I mean, not to say that you can't chafe. Like, it, like I understand the the mechanics of it. You know, uh, you could chafe, but I don't anymore. Um, and I just remember like that that kind of stuff, that kind of like embarrassingness, uh, embarrass things that were embarrassing. Uh, they're just not happening anymore. Uh, being able to fit into a movie theater seat without thinking, why did they make the movie theater seats smaller? <laughs> all of a sudden, like, I remember that. I remember going to the movie theater and like sitting down and not fitting in it very well, like just being squeezed and thinking, why did that, like, how, how greedy of them to, uh, to make these seats, you know, like more narrow. And then I looked around and I was like, no, 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 these seats are the same. Like they're old seats. I'm, I'm the one that has gotten bigger. I remember I, we had a, an SUV and I didn't fit in it quite right. Like, like it was like I, I, like I was spreading out so that it, like I should fit in here, but I'm not. And that was frustrating. And when you don't have those things bugging you, there's like so much more mental space, like the, the mental space. That's, ah, oh, that's probably the best part of it all. The, when I sit down to a meal and I can just eat and just eat the food. And I don't have to worry and I don't have to like obsess, not to say that there aren't times where I don't obsess or uh, that I do, because there are, there are times where I overthink things and all that stuff, but just in general to sit down and to just enjoy a piece of chocolate cake and to enjoy a bowl of spaghetti, like, and not to have to worry about it, um, to lay on my back and to be able to just breathe easily. Uh, I had gotten to the point where if I laid down, like when I was at my heaviest, I would lay down on my back and I couldn't breathe right. <laughs> like I, I was like, why do I feel short of breath right now? Like wh what's going on? And it was just because excess weight. Um, yeah, let's see. Th those, those, those are the ones that come to my mind. Yeah. Um, let's see. Let's see if there's any other questions. We are, oh, we're already at an hour. Wow. Uh, I think I've maybe gotten all of them. Let's see, man, there's a lot of, sorry, I'm, I'm behind. Uh, let's see here. I apologize if I've missed any questions. Uh, okay. So Karen does say I'm going to be dog sitting in steep hills for two weeks. <laughs> Uh, dog walks at two times per day. Can you give me feedback about altering my plan? If I need to, it's intense exercise. I would say, look, if you need, if you ever need to alter your plan, then alter your plan. It's a temporary thing. You're going to, it's like, that's kind of, to me, like vacation mode. I go on vacation, vacation mode from time to time. If I go out of town or whatever, it's just easier that way for me to just say, this is vacation. It's a temporary time. I'm going to do what works. Uh, I'll alter my plan. However, it seems like it needs to be altered, which is just a guess. Um, I'll continue to weigh, uh, if there's a scale there, if there's not a scale, then I'll weigh when I get back. Uh, if I gain for whatever reason, then I know how to lose the weight. So I'll, I'll, I'll get back and I'll lose the weight. Um, but that's what I'll do. Uh, so uh, like, don't make it more complicated than it needs to be. You may find that you don't really need to change that, but if you do change it and see what your results are, uh, it'll teach you something. Uh, okay. Oh, good. Shrinking shadow hadn't heard, uh, my story before. <laughs> so I'm glad, I'm glad the, the recap was helpful. Uh, I never really know how many people in the audience have heard this stuff, you know, like how many times, uh, uh, somebody like there was a question at the very, very beginning. Someone asked, uh, like, the, like, I, I don't know when they left the question, but it was at the very, very top of the chat. And they said like, how often, <laughs> how many times can you do a Q and a for the same subject or something like that? And, I mean, and I, and they're right. You know, I do this intermittent fasting Q and a every Friday, uh, and I've done them, you know, n not weekly all the time, but I've done a lot of them. I don't know how many at this point. Um, 
and yet people have questions and I'm happy to answer it. And um, I feel like it's kind of like, you know, Dave Ramsey, he's been doing that show. Like if you don't know who Dave Ramsey is, he basically does a personal finance show and he's been on the air since I think 1992. So he's been on the air for like 31 years and he answers the same questions uh, every week, every day, every day, like five days a week. He's on the hour. Uh, he's on there for three hours a day. I think that's right. And he's, you know, and ultimately his advice comes down to spend less than you make. Like, that's it. And, you know, I could say one sentence, you know, if you're trying to lose weight, eat less than you burn. If you want to maintain, eat exactly what you burn. But, you know, people have questions because life is complicated and, and weight loss can feel complicated from time, from time to time. So, yeah, so that's why I continue to have these Q and A's. <laughs> um, let's see here. So I think that maybe got it. Uh, okay. Yeah. Okay. Good. Karen. Thank you for asking again. Cause I, I, I might've missed it otherwise. Uh, and so the shrinking shadow said if family or friends ever ask you out for lunch, uh, do you go or you decline because you only eat dinner? I absolutely accept every single invitation I ever get, uh, to lunch. Um, and that is part of what I call my code. Okay. So my code is the thing that is kind of the overarching, like rule for myself. So, um, <laughs> JR, my husband's in here. Uh, thank you for joining. Um, <laughs> so the code. So my code is basically my plan for going off plan, but ultimately it's about why do I do what I do? So I want to eat in a way that makes it so that I maintain a normal weight. Ultimately, that's what I'm, what, that's what I'm going for. So, um, so my code is like the general idea is that people are more important than things. People are more important to me. Relationships are more important to me than my plan. Uh, I want to do both. I, I want to stick to my plan as best I can, and I want to have good relationships. But sometimes those things collide, right? Like sometimes you're trying to practice OMAD, but you, you know, your sister says, hey, will you go to lunch with me? And um, so my own personal rule is I'm going to go to lunch with her. I'm going to do my best to eat the right amount of food but I'm also going to have family supper because that's very important to me too. So I have kids, so we're going to have supper together every night. That's just, that's a non-negotiable, but I'm also going to have those dinners or whatever. Now, so far that has never, uh, made it impossible for me to either lose weight or keep the weight off. Now, if it ever got to the point where I'm accepting all these lunch invitations and, and it's just not working, I'm gaining way too much weight, then I would change something. But so far, it's worked for me. And again, it goes back to my belief that it's not about intermittent fasting per se, it's about eating the right amount of food. So could I someday in the future, you know, like go to eating three meals a day and that work for me? It could, but it would take me being really disciplined with uh, things that I'm not good at <laughs> yet, uh, like portion control, things like that. I'm, I'm not great with small meals. Like I like big meals. I like stick to your ribs kind of food. And uh, those, that combination means, you know, two mad or OMAD works really well for me. Three meals a day, usually too much food. Uh, so there you go. Uh, Ellen Haven asked, uh, are you incorporating the treadmill while doing your six miles? Uh, no, I don't have a treadmill right now. I've never had a treadmill. I do walk inside my house. I just walk around my room or walk around the house. Uh, I'll walk in my backyard. I go on, you know, walks out in the neighborhood, stuff like that. Um, but, uh, that's, that's just what I do. So, um, uh, so yeah, like people, do you know if you have a treadmill man that would make it so much easier <laughs> um we just don't have the space for it and i've just i've i've never uh i've never gotten one but um but it could help uh cuz you know doing something inside is really nice because you never have an excuse uh like the weather's not an excuse you can just you're there you can do it it's easy to get on and do uh or you still have to make yourself do the thing and that can be difficult. Um, but, uh, but yeah, 
if you stopped the six miles and kept doing your intermittent fasting routine, do you think you would still maintain? I do think I would still maintain, uh, but I would have to be really careful about emotionally eating uh, because I uh, find the steps really help me with that. Because if I'm upset, I'll just go get my steps in, you know, like I'll, I'll go get, go for a walk and that kind of a thing. So if I didn't have that goal and I've done that, like in the past, like I've experimented with not walking my six miles, like in, especially in 2016, 2017, I experimented like, let's just not walk. How's that, how's that go? I could keep the weight off, but I was grouchy and grouchiness paves the way for all sorts of like emotional eating. So, uh, I, I want to keep the miles in there because it gives me structure. I'm a lot more productive. Surprisingly, when I, when I walk six miles a day, I get way more done than on those days where I don't walk six miles. Go figure. Um, yeah. Okay. Uh, I think I got all the questions now. <laughs> uh, yeah. My husband's hilarious. He keeps me laughing. Um, <laughs> all right. Well, thank you guys so much, uh, for, uh, joining me. This was a lot of fun. Uh, I hope you, uh, found it helpful. Uh, I'm going to leave a link to my book, uh, for people who maybe, uh, like if you don't have access to Amazon, cause some people have told me they don't have access to Amazon and like, you know, uh, people join in from all parts of, uh, the world. So that books to read, uh, will send you a link. Uh, it'll show you all the different marketplaces it's available on cause it's available on Amazon, but also like uh, smash words and various things. So there you go. Thank you guys so much for joining me and I'll see you next week.